Hello guys, I'm Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net and welcome to this other off-the-cuff uh, off vlog, which is uh, just me telling you stuff I wish I knew. So this is things I wish I'd known, I wish I knew part three. Thanks for watching, as always. Uh, I keep saying this, there's billions and billions of videos on YouTube and you chose to watch this one. So I'm gonna try my best to get across some value to you and to show you applicable tips. So I have my axe here. I don't even know why I have it. I never play it in the videos, but here's a few tips. If I could grab my 16 year old or 20 year old self about focusing in practice. All right, there are three pillars I focus on with the people I work in my coaching mentoring program and I call them the pillars of practice. Not to be confused with my pillars of jazz improvisation, we have this, we cover them in the mastery program and it's uh, improv on a one, two and three and roughly we have these three pillars which you can look up on the blog, the three pillars of improv. It's a method of learning improv that I've devised that I think works well, but I digress. Uh, the pillars of practice are as follows. It's practicing focused, practicing with a timer, meaning you grab your phone, you put it for five minutes, say I'm gonna do this for five minutes. And that's pretty easy, right? And the third focus is always playing in time. So I've shared playing in time in my first video. Uh, in my second, the second I wish I knew video, which was last time or the time before. And now I'm gonna talk about the focus side. And here's a pitfall. I used to be a kid. Yeah, we all used to be kids. And I heard stories about the shredder somewhere in Russia who played guitar 14 hours per day. And I'm like, oh, wow. And then you hear him play like, whoa, you know, he's really, really good. He plays really fast chops, right? And then you hear of Charlie Parker, who was playing saxophone like 20 hours a day. And you hear these stories of people just not even having a life and doing these things. And it almost, personally, at least, I don't know if it does that to you, but at that point, I felt pressured into doing that. Meaning like, if you don't do that, you're a failure, right? And I wish someone had told me that you can get pretty good, like to, to a sense, I'm, I would say satisfied. We're never satisfied, but I, I play good. I can, you know, hold my own and solo and I understand the chops and, and the chords and the standards and whatever. And you don't have to play saxophone 20 hours a day and shoot drugs in your veins in order to do that. That's a totally different reality. It, it is, I mean, speaking of the devil, right? It is a reality and it is accessible to you if that, that's in your flow and that's what you want to do, but it's by no means required. And one of my college teachers, Charles said, you know, that was a different era. Like Charlie Par Parker was not in school for jazz. You were in school for jazz. Now you have access to the best resources. You don't have to stab in the dark and have these old vinyl records and sort of slow them down and try to, you have these classes to teach you harmony. Now you have the internet, you have the, the music library of the world at your fingertips on your phone. You can do this now. You have YouTube. So don't, don't confuse the two. So here's my advice to you. And I'm going to try to make it short and sweet. And please let me know in the comment if you, there's anything you'd like me to add about this or if you'd like to pursue the discussion. Focused time is worth way more than saying I'm punching the clock and I'm doing my three hours of practice every night. Uh, the focus side in which this is one of my pillars of practice is it makes it very practical. Same way as I don't know, you learn martial arts. Some of my private students, they, they do that. They do karate. You don't do karate like 12 hours a day. You show up at your class and you do your things and you maybe you practice at home a little bit and that's that and you become good. Not to mean you're Bruce Lee, but same thing. If you don't want to become Wes Montgomery or if you're a sax player, if you don't want to become John Coltrane, you don't need to put all your life on the line. Uh, I mean, you can if you want, but it's not required, right? So getting back to this idea of focus, um, if you have time well invested, and that's what that's what my pillar of practice is about, meaning do you know what you're doing now? Same focus as you'd pick a book and read a novel. You're here, you're reading that sentence, that paragraph, that sentence, that word, and you keep reading. You know when you fall asleep and you have to start rereading a paragraph when you feel, yeah, you're out of focus. So are you doing your focused work? If so, that time investment will be much uh, much better. You'll get a better return on your time invested, invested 
than if you simply punch the clock and say, I have to do three hours and you're just running down the minutes and you're just practicing scales or doing whatever I have time. I have time to spare so I can waste my time. No, you don't do that. You yeah. And here we go. Often people will get into paralysis by analysis. So they say it's either three hours every day or nothing. You get in that all or nothing mentality. But for me, I'm an instructor. I see a lot of people I'm like, grab your guitar, man. Just grab it. Play seven minutes. Put it back down. Then go back to your life and your responsibility and your gardening and your car that broke down and your job and your kids and whatever. That's fine. But just be sure that you put in some time. Your seven minutes, if you do it consistently, it will matter. It does matter. Especially if you're focused, especially if you have a timer and you know exactly what you're working on and why you're doing it. And you just do it with a lot of, uh, you have a high intent intention in your practice. Um, speaking of which, so I refer to investing. So that, that's really important to me. Imagine, I keep referring to that. Imagine if you had a dollar, I hope you do, and you invest it. Uh, where would you like to invest at 20% or would you like to invest it at 1% or negative 1%? So think of the same with your time. Why, why would you waste your time? Your time is the only thing on this earth that is actually limited and wildly limited. We're here for a very short amount of time. So take your time and say that minute or that five minute or that hour, I want to make sure it pays dividends or interest or whatever you want to say. So that that's the kind of mindset you have to get into and not the I have to get three hours tonight or else I'm not going to get good. That's simply not true. All right. So that's in the spirit of things I wish I know if I could go back and tell my 20 year old self to stop being intimidated by people who tell you to practice six hours a day and to stop listening to these stories of Charlie Parker, even the I forgot his name, I forgot his name, but very uh, Ben Maunder, Ben Maunder. Uh, some people I know studied personally, privately under Ben Maunder. And uh, at some point he's interviewed in a magazine said, yeah, I've heard people say I practice 13 hours a day. It's like, this doesn't make sense. I don't have 13 hours a day to play guitar. Like, what the hell, you know? So even these guys find it ludicrous. Now, my last caveat on this is, of course, if you're focused and you do have three hours of pro focused practice, then you're in the Pat Metheny realm. You're like your volcano focus. So it's like slow and steady or, you know, the, 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 the fable, slow and steady wins the race. Well, if you're fast and steady, you're going to smoke the other guy. So that's also a possibility if you can muster it. So on that note, I will let you go. I hope you're enjoying these, uh, these new types of vlogs where I, <laughs> I grab a guitar just for show. Um, uh, once again, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. If you believe you'd like me to help you create a custom plan so we can take your chops, your jazz guitar chops to the next level, just get on a call with me. It's solely free of charge. And I'd be happy to speak on the phone and see if we can map out something and work together finally. So head over here, either in the, I'll put a YouTube, is it here or here, whatever, or in description. The URL is easy. It's next level, one word, nextlevel.jazzguitarlessons.net. So head over there. You have access straight to my calendar. You can book yourself. We can talk and see how we can uh, work together to increase your chops. On that note, please subscribe and like this video. And uh, I intend on publishing more vlogs in the future. So uh, stay tuned for those. And I will see you soon on the website, jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. Take care, guys. Thank you.